This video is going to show how to configure the velocity camera within Apex. As you can see, we have two different areas we can address the camera. We have our top level where we can select an optimization routine. For example, if I wanted to look at a reduced noise pattern, I could select reduced noise here, press this, and it will auto optimize the camera. You'll notice as it does this, it's changing settings over here in our camera panel. For the velocity, the things we can change are the binning level and the exposure time. Within the velocity, we have a few different options. We have a 1x1 one one binning for full resolution, a 2x2, two two, and a 4x4. Four four. These are the actual binnings that occur in the camera. Beyond this are binning levels that occur after readout. So we don't get any significant speed increases. Uh, we just have smaller pixel sizes if we're saving patterns or processing. So generally for scanning, I recommend using 4x4. Four four. And so when we've selected reduced noise, basically what we've done is it's selected a 4x4 four four binning and it's adjusted the exposure time to get us a max maximum saturation value here at around 0.9 or 90% of the full uh, well value of the detector. If I turn on my external control, we can see that the patterns are very good with this setting as we expect for reduced noise. Now, I can select other optimizations here. For example, I can select fast, or I could also select fast from the pull down list here. These are the same pull down lists. This is just the, the, the secondary control. If I select fast and hit optimize, it's going to change. You see it adjusts the exposure time to get a faster frame rate. And then we're running, in this case, with a lower maximum value. But if we turn on our external control, you'll see the patterns are still very good for indexing. Okay. And if we wanted to check this a little bit more, we can go to the pattern mode select a pattern, we see we still get a very good fit, uh, number of votes, fit, and confidence index. That's all, all very good for the fast setting. If I go back to here, I'll turn off external control. We also have the option, of course, of manually adjusting these. If I wanted to go a little bit slower, I can turn up the exposure time. As so I increase the exposure time, my frame rate decreases, my uh, saturation level or intensity level increases, and once I'm in an area I'm happy, I can capture background. We have two different options. SEM area collects it at the field of view we're currently looking at. Of course, you want to make sure we're not an external control and we're rastering. That's what we see here. We also have the option of using what's called a smart background, where it will reduce the field of view on the microscope by uh, a couple of settings. So we're looking at more and more grains and collect the background, then return it to the original magnification. Um, this you have to use with a little bit more care in case you're looking at a, a small section. If you reduce your magnification, you're off your area of interest, but in this case, it's no problem. Um, now, I want to just go through some of these settings here beyond this. The range setting just gives us different time ranges to work on. The mode is important for the velocity series. The standard mode, uh, this is using the full uh, bit range of the camera. So it's standard mode and high speed. So I'm going to select fast. Here, when we go to do our scan, so I'm just going to go do a quick scan here. I'm going to hit course, just collect a quick scan. So we get an idea of the speed of this detector at that setting. And we'll see here, generally that's going to be somewhere on average around 2,500 points per second. That's kind of the standard speed mode of the camera. However, if we want to go a little bit faster than that, um, we have the option of going from standard mode to what we call high speed mode. In this case, it's going to uh, go from a 12-bit a, a image to a 10-bit image. So I've selected that. I'm going to hit my collect my new background. And so if we look at our, just kind of look at our patterns with the external control, you'll see we still get very good indexing. And if I come and scan with this setting, we get very good confidence index. And our speed, it's hard to tell with just a little bit of this, but in general, if we look at enough points, that jumps it up to a little bit over 3,000. And so for the for the, the high speed setting with both velocity cameras, you can run in the high speed mode. Generally, I run in the standard mode just because I can switch back and forth between things pretty easily, um, but it's sort of user preference. 
The third option is using the super mode. This is the one that's an option if you have the velocity super. So if we select this, it's going to change the mode of the camera. So it actually has to put the camera into a different mode to get higher speeds. Um, so this takes just a second because it has to reinitialize the camera. Um, and so this is, uh, again, this is an option. So the velocity uh, plus cameras will, will be limited to that th around 3,000 points per second limit. Um, the 4500 have the additional hardware settings um, that allow us to, to get a faster throughput of the data for faster scanning speeds. So it does take just a minute for it to, to reinitialize and uh, check the configurations as it's rebooting the camera. While it's doing, I'll talk a little bit about the other things we have here. We have the option of image processing. We can look at just the live image. Uh, we can look at the normalized image where it's just basically doing an auto contrast str or brightness stretch across the, the, the range of the camera. We can look at the standard background subtraction. We can look at the enhanced background subtraction. Uh, and then we have the custom background where we're able to come to our image processing and create our own uh, image processing recipe um, for specific applications. Uh, and then, of course, we have the option of doing snapshot frame averaging. When we look at just a single uh, frame, uh, we can do averaging, or if we want to average during scans, uh, this, of course, improves the signal noise uh, of the signal, but also increases the collection time. I'll show an example of that in a minute. So now the camera is in the correct mode again. So now if I hit SEM area, you'll see, and we collect it here. So we're now in this mode. If I come just back to pattern and put it into external mode and click around a little, we see that the patterns are still very good. Our indexing is still very good. Uh, and when I go ahead and now if I want to go to my, I'm going to go to the ultra fast mode and hit optimize. It'll recollect the background and be ready to go now with these settings here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a medium one just so we can see the speeds a little bit better. It averages a little bit better as we collect more data. You'll see our speeds jump up very quickly to around 4,500 uh, points per second with that sort of speed mode. So we don't need to let the whole thing collect, but it gives an example of how we switch into the super mode to get that high speeds. And if we look back at the patterns again, just to look at the, the, the frame average, because that's a single frame. If I click that up to four frames, you can see the signal to noise, how it improves. Of course, if we're looking at a single frame, I can do that very easily. So with that, that should give a quick introduction of how to operate the Velocity Super. Um, the other thing, of course, is you can manually select all these things. But for scanning, I generally recommend using the 4x4. Uh, I usually run it in just the standard mode unless I'm really interested in throughput, and then I'll operate in the super mode.